harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. Dom! William! Here we are! How's it going? Fantastic. Now, can we just do a little t uh, top to toe thing? Because yeah. you're wearing probably the best trainers I've seen you wear, certainly in the last three to four years. These were a present, so I didn't choose them myself, which is probably why they're so uh, attractive. What was it, your stylish wife? It was my wife and son. Brilliant. Great colours. Do you very, like them? Very cool. You, I'd let you borrow them, but you get bigger feet than me. Slightly bigger feet, but your cool metre has gone up, I'd say, at least 17%. I like the trousers. They look like moleskin, are they? They feel really good upon your buttocks. Yeah? You're still working on your buttocks? Yeah. I'm working hard, actually, Dom. Mm. Yeah. Squats? Squats, lunges, step-ups, step-downs. Step to the sides. Lots, lots of stepping, stepomatic stuff. If you want, yeah, if you want to get your buttocks bigger, you have to move your legs. I hear. Also, a high fat diet. So, could I recommend maybe putting some, you know, butter or lard on your pizza? I don't mind that. Stirring some uh, duck fat into your pasta. Like that. Is, is that good for your butt? Well, for some people, yeah, when they retain fat, yeah. they retain it in certain areas. Ladies classically retain their fat more around the thigh and buttock area. Men, around the Santa belly area. Which is, is, is an indicator of a uh, bad hailstone. I'm a little uh, predisposed to that too. My wonderful father has, has been fashioning a, a Santa belly and he looks pretty good with it. Your dad always looks fantastic. Before we bring in our guest, I had yeah. one question that I wanted to ask you because this might not be something that we answer Today, this might be an ongoing thing for people at home to think about and for you and I to think about. But I saw this thing online. I thought this is a great question to ask Billy. The Fellowship of... Oh, actually, the Two Towers trilogy. Yeah. No, Two Towers trilogy. There's only one Two Towers. I'm, dr I'm drunk on Red Bull. The Lord of the Rings trilogy yeah. has a PG-13 rating yeah. in the United States. Yeah. That means that in each of the movies, yeah. you can have one... Swear word. Where would you put that swear word? Are you really? Yeah. For instance, in the Fellowship of the Ring, I could say, fucking Buckleberry Ferry, follow me. <laughs> and you could get it past the censors. But wouldn't that be brilliant? So we're. I, I want to ask people at home, where is the best place in each movie? Because <laughs> Gandalf could go, fucking fool of a tuck. <laughs> so I mean? Or before, like when I know the skeleton, I could go, Oh, I'm really fucking sorry, Gandalf. <laughs> oh, God. That's it's, brilliant. It's the gift that keeps on giving, right? Oh, let's Sean, look at Sean, Return Sean of the Bean King. In the minds of Mora, they have a fucking cave troll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best one that I've thought about to now in um, Return of the King, and send in your suggestions if you have any, but fucking Aragorn, my friends, you fucking bow to no one. <laughs> So send in your suggestions. Yeah, but, where would you put the swear word? It's, in, it's one. What, in you each only allowed one. Now, what if you <laughs> said, like, say, for instance, Sean Bean in, in the Mines of Moria, when you say one, could he say, I've got a motherfucking cave troll? <laughs> I think, I think he is can. that one word? Yeah, mother, is that... motherfucker is, uh, is one swear word, right? Right, okay. But then that's it for the rest of the movie. That's it. Any, anytime anybody else wanted to swear, no. No. So when, when Frodo and Gandalf are having a little moment in the minds of Moria and Frodo says, there's someone following us, Gandalf could not then say, no. it's fucking Gollum. We've already <laughs> had it. He's been following us for fucking days. And then Return of the King all the way through, four and a half hours, no swear words, right up till Sam comes home. I'm fucking home! <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving. Aragorn running into the final battle for fucking Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, should we bring our guest in? We're very excited. Let's have a song before we do oh, that. Come on, let's do a song. Love exciting in you. Come aboard. We're expecting you. Was that from Dom? Don't know. It's the sound. love boat. Oh, the love boat. Soon we'll be making another run or something like that. Uh, honestly, I never really watched the love boat, but pitch it to me. It's people isolated Dom. on boats 
kissing and hugging each other. Is that what's You've going on? You've never seen the love never boat. Seen the Have love you boat. seen um nowadays it'd be called like the sex cruise or something. But, uh, have you seen Fantasy Island? No, is that the plane? The plane? Yeah. No, never saw. Well, it. they're both basically the same show set on different things. So Isolated the parts love of the boat. world. They're on a boat. The love boat. Yeah. And you know, you get to know the captain. Cappy. The the guy who helps people out. Chef. The lady who welcomes. Hostess. Another guy who helps out, but not as much. He likes to hide in the toilet. Is it? Why? Does, does he have an irritable bowel syndrome? He's just having a break. Okay. But all these people invite people on every week, different people, and they're all looking for love, dog. Love. And they might find it in the most unusual places. Oh, well, you sometimes do. Orifices and stuff, is that what you mean? So basically, that was the love boat. But the reason I'm singing it... The love boat! I remember that bit. Very 70s, right? Fantasy Island, the same sort of thing. You get to know the guy who owns the island. The owner. The <laughs> little guy who helps him out. The plane. The That's fr- it, that friend. guy. And is he scared of planes? Is that what it is? No, but the plane comes every week with new people. The they, have diff- the plane. they have ideas for different adventures on Fantasy Island. And whatever your fantasy is, you want to be the CEO of a huge company yeah. or you want to be the hero in your own story. Well, we all are. You'd like to be the lady who invented um, penicillin. Tights. Oh, yeah, penicillin. <laughs> Tights, yeah. Or penicillin. Both, both helpful. <laughs> you get to do that. Is that but, Alexander Fleming that but through, through, but <laughs> What, tights? Tights, yeah. <laughs> was it? I he was Scottish, Fleming. you know. Was he? The, everybody the guy who invented who, tights? Everybody who invented anything of any use was Scottish. The telephone. What was the name of the guy who invented the telephone? Alexander Bell. He's Scottish, really? Scottish. Tarmac. Tarmac. Tarmac as, they, as they call it here. Asphalt. Uh, yeah, that he was Scottish. Uh, uh, waterproof, uh, waterproof uh, clothing, Scottish. Scottish. The fridge freezer, Scottish. Scot- you wouldn't have thought you'd need that in Scotland. In, he he uh, did it by accident. Time. though. He's trying really? to heat himself up. And if you've noticed, the back of a fridge is hot. True. And he, he accidentally uh, made a fridge by trying to heat himself up. Wow, so he's, a, he's an accidental genius. Yeah, he put a heater behind the box and the inside of the box got really cold, so he kept his eggs in there. Wow. Well, here's another thing. Yeah. Why are we keeping our eggs in the fridge? Chickens uh, don't. Only in America. Chickens don't keep their eggs in the fridge. In Britain, you don't need to. No, well, you don't, no, you don't need to in America, surely. No, you do. Why? Because they're, they're, looked, they're looked after in different ways. The chickens? Um, no, the eggs. Whatever they do to eggs over here... Yeah. Before they go to, like, Ralph's or Vaughn's or wherever. Those are supermarkets in the United States for people um, Before the they go there, they, they do something through. to them. Right. They, they wave something over them. A light or something. Right. Ultraviolet or something. And after you do that to an egg, you have to keep it in the fridge. In Britain, they it don't... It sounds wait. like you're making it up, honestly. No. It sounds like you're making that I've up. I've looked that up, but I just scanned the article. Right. So <laughs> it's absolutely true, but I don't know what it is America does that Britain doesn't. Have you seen that moment where they check, they scan the eggs to see if there's a baby chicken inside or if there's not a baby chicken inside? Have you seen, that? seen that? It's no. a light, and they sweep a light over it, and if there's a baby chick yeah. inside, it glows orange, and if it's just... An egg inside, it doesn't. That's well, there, there incredible. shouldn't be because it's unfertilized, isn't it? Yeah, but sometimes the cock eh? can uh, get in there. The it gets in, among, in amongst the, the chickens. Cockerel. The roo- cockerel gets in amongst the chickens. Do you know the difference between a rooster and a cockerel? Mm-hmm. Go on. The, it's nothing to do with types, is it? <laughs> no. Carry just on. spelling. It's, is it? It's, it's just, just a, a different word, yeah. but they're exactly the same, same thing. Same thing. Um, all right, well, that's everything that Scotland's invented. Do you know the first ever railway on the planet was in Manchester, England? Where did it go from and to? It just went town centre to a mill, I think. Because it's cotton industry, so I think there'd be some sort of textile mill. Mm-hmm. But yeah, first ever railway on the planet was in Manchester, which revolutionised the planet. Mm-hmm. Incredible. The first time someone tried to make a railroad, they thought that the... the, the, the <laughs> The wheels 
Yeah. And the railway track would have to be like cogs. Oh, right. Like, for um, it to stay on. Not serrated. What do you call that with a, a zip? With a cog. Yeah. Like cogs. Cogged. Oh, cogged. Cogged. Like but you don't need that because the, the, weight, of the, the weight of the train holds on. Mm. So there you are. So maybe that was a guy in Manchester that did that. Should we bring in our guest? Yeah, Let's because introduce... it's a happy and it's a guest about love, which is why I sang the love boat. The, the love, love boat. Monday, Soon Tuesday, we'll love making... boat. No, that's Tuesday, not... Wednesday, love, love boat. boat. But um, he's, he's not from the love boat, but he's from somewhere else where people have found love. Oh, well, that, I can see the tie in there. So we're bringing in our friend. We were actually on our friend Nick's podcast, I don't know, a few a few months back now, Nick Vile. Yep. And um, it was a great, we had a great time talking about us launching our podcast and asking him about it. And we his, virtually his... launched it on the Vile Files, yeah. which, is, uh, which is Nick's, Nick's uh, show. podcast. Um, well, let's bring Nick in and then we can ask Nick a whole bunch of things. Nick, if you're listening. Hi, Nick. Do you want to come in? Come on. It's good we've kept a chair for you. It's good, Nick. We'll move around so you feel more comfortable. It's a little salty, a little malty. It's Marmite. If there's anyone from Marmite who wants Billy and I to um, do the commercials and promote the uh, product or even just send us some stuff, there's some amazing Marmite T-shirts out there, please send them to us because we'll wear them on the podcast and you'll get free advertising. Yeah. But really? if you want us to write the next jingle, we'll do that. I'll do it. I love Marmite now. Yeah, I've loved Marmite for like a good 30 years, but Billy's new to Marmite and it's turned into one of your favourite new discoveries, hasn't it? I'll tell you somebody who's got no idea what Marmite is. Nick. Nick Vile. No idea. Nick, do, should we tell you, should we pitch you Marmite? See if oh, you I like it. I think you feel like you just did. Well, I did, but I don't know if we were, I don't know if we were rolling at that point. Maybe we were. Um, but it's, it's, it's um, eaten primarily by students in all over Britain because it is a relatively cheap spread, savory spread that they tend to put on toast or beans on toast or stir it into your um, sauces or your gravies to make it a little bit more tasty. It's a classic, probably the classic student food, isn't it? And it's on toast. dark, dark, thick, Vicious. black as night. Yeah. <clears throat> And it's very, very strong. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong flavor. Mm -hmm. People either love it or hate yeah, it. We're yeah. going to get you a tub. Yeah. As tub. a gift. I don't oh, think tub would be what the What would you call that? I would say jar. It's a jar. jar yeah. Tub, tub. Do we think tub is more plasticky. Is it? I, I guess. So. Also, it sounds like there might be like a, it would require a whole truck to deliver no, it. Oh, no, no, no. You can get them yeah. like that big or you can get whoppers. Okay. I, get, I get whoppers. But my all-time favorite sandwich, stick with me here, Nick. Brown bread, English butter, mature English cheddar, slices of green apple, rocket, I think you guys call it rocket, arugula, 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 marmite, crisps, the other bread. That flavor, is a, flavor of crisps, Tom? That's a very, well, it's it, a very intimidating sandwich. It's a bit intimidating. I would say top of the list for the flavor of crisps, salt and vinegar. Number <sighs> two, jalapeno. Number three, cheese and onion. I would it's, have said salt and vinegar. Yeah. I thought, I have it's an right. intense, intense sandwich. I said to Billy the other day, it's the type of sandwich where if you have two or three bites, I need to put it down and say, right, give me a minute. Let me let me just process that. Because it's it's a complicated set of flavors, but fuck me, it's good, Nick. We'll bring you, we'll bring uh, you Marmite. We uh, really will. I, 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 I hope so. Uh, I'll, I'll have to... I'll take your word for it. Because actually, I've, I've thought about you, Dominic, a lot Nick. since our last podcast. Just Hold on. Evenings. Wait a minute. Well, Sorry, Billy. But well, when we talked, when you were on my show, you, you talked about your love for animals and your yeah. backyard mm -hmm. and, and how animals are, are speaking languages we can't possibly. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I had a, my dog, Jeff, when I had you Your dog's off. called Jeff? His name's Jeff. Brilliant. Yeah. I like you a lot more, Nick. Uh, thanks. Yeah. And and since I and I got Jeff in June, July. Jeff in June. And uh, <laughs> July. I got uh, a small backyard, but very private, kind of a sanctuary type of area. And, and I, I, I pay attention to Jeff as he kind of reacts to certain things. Yeah. And my first reaction is, like, what, 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 what the fuck are you barking at? Mm. And I think of you because I realize that there are things going on that I can't see. Absolutely. I mean, Billy and has a dog And he's barking well. at like little rodents or whatever. Absolutely. Or, you know, and, and I always A make, smell from yeah. two, he's like, you know, yeah, three quarters on. of a mile away. 
a squirrel climbed a tree and that wind took 30 seconds to get to your dog or Billy's yeah. dog. And they'll go, squirrel! Yeah. And then they go, and we don't know. We don't know. We don't stuff. know. And I've done this scientifically because I've got a dog, Bobby, Bobby Johnson, and I have scientifically farted very close <laughs> have to you him. How do you scientifically fart? You, you do it with a pen and paper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Work it out with a pencil. Yeah, the yeah. calculator. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll gradually go further and further away and I can get to the end of Main Street <laughs> and Bobby will still notice that fart. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. So anyway, also, I think of you. Every yeah, time. yeah, man. I mean, look, we're, we're all animals. We're all in the animal kingdom. We have, through our evolution as humans, kind of pulled ourselves further and further away from the connection to all these other animals, but certainly dogs and cats and squirrels and snakes and spiders, they are much more connected to each other for good reason because some of these animals can kill the other animals and some of them are food and some of them are prey. So the frequency that your dogs have in their ears to listen to other dogs or to listen for squirrels or to listen for snakes or all that kind of stuff is way more heightened than a human's would be. Yeah, that's right. Jeff likes horses. Aha. Uh -huh. Anytime they're on TV. He's a big fan of the show called Yellowstone. Are you familiar with it? Oh, that? yeah, my friend yeah. Hassie Harrison is on that. Okay, is yeah. that Kevin Costner as well? Yes, yeah. Dances with wolves. Yeah. Fantastic. But what it's amazing, amazing how he likes... He loves horses. Who, Kev? Jeff. Or Jeff, yeah. 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 Kev, Kev is like also a good I bet dog's Kev name. Does. But there's n it's not every single dog that recognizes a TV, is it? Like I don't some know. Do and some he's don't. my first dog, so I'm... I'm no, it's good. Does that, your dog watch the telly? No, he doesn't. He does doesn't he, like does the he TV. recognize the telly as no, a thing? No. See? It doesn't yeah. matter what's going on in the TV. It, it, it's as if it doesn't exist. You could oh. have dogs on barking in a They're park. Mad. Yeah, you see? There oh, you Jeff, Jeff responds to the TV as soon as it's on. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder what that is about. But that's great. I have a friend called Jamie Wozni who does a whole bunch of things in LA. But one of the things that she does in LA is... Anim uh, she does an animal communication course. So if you're wanting to try and have more of a profound relationship with Jeff or any animal, she'll take you through this course of trying to have you understand how to connect a little closer with those animals. It's fun. Have you it? taken the course? Yeah. Yeah, it was really fun. I've got a friend doing it right now, actually. Interesting. Uh, hello, Chelsea. Well, should we talk about um, <laughs> another and other places that, in New York? That, that, yeah, that wasn't the borough in New York and London. That was my friend Chelsea, who lives in Costa Rica, who's taking an animal communication course. Unlike other restrictive diets or workout programs, Noon Weight uses psychology to empower you with the practical knowledge and skills you need to build smarter, more sustainable, long-term habits and behaviors. Noon isn't like other trendy diets. It actually helps you get to a healthier you which is why I love using it. Noom allows it to be about the process with ups and downs. I hate a diet when I feel like I can't eat anything. But Noom actually educates me on how to be healthy to help me reach my goals. You're the boss. You decide how Noom weight fits into your life, not the other way around. 5, 10, or 15 minutes a day, how much time do you want to spend on the app is entirely up to you. Dom, more than 60% of users lose 5% or more body weight by 16 weeks. Wow. And more than 60% of users engaged with the program keep the weight off for over a year or more. That's amazing. Noom is driven by a singular mission to help as many people as possible live healthier lives through behavioral changes. They use the latest in proven behavioral science to empower people to take control of their health for good. And through a combination of psychology, technology, and human coaching, their platform has helped millions of users meet their personal health and wellness Sign up for your trial and get psychology-based support and motivation to reach your goal at noom.com slash onion. That's noom.com slash onion to sign up for your free trial. Billy, you know I love cereal. I like to eat cereal not just for breakfast. Sometimes I like it as a little snack after my workout. Sometimes I like it when I'm watching a film. And we're all trying to eat better, especially now in the new year. But healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has amazing flavors you'll love, but without all the bad stuff. And it's amazing, as I said, as a midnight snack right before bed. Here's some facts, Tom. Zero grams of sugar. 
13 to 14 grams of protein and only 4 net grams of carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories a serving. Build your own box. Available flavours to build your very own custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream and maple waffle. They're all very delicious. They're Tom. super yummy. So go to magicspoon.com slash onion to grab a custom bundle of cereal and start your new year off just right. And be sure to use our promo code onion at the checkout to get $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's back with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash onion and use the code onion to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. We, we have maybe, questions about maybe. The Bachelor. Okay. Would that we've be got, all right? We've great. got Whatever. lots of questions about yeah. The Bachelor. Because I'm be a Bachelor. Are you a Bachelor currently? No. Okay. Are you married? No. I mean, so it depends on how you de- de- define Bachelor, but I am in a committed relationship. So, you, yeah, you're not a Bachelor because no. Bachelor is a single man. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> True. Now, maybe your dog is attracted to the TV because you're a TV personality. I don't think he would respond. Well, he might respond to me on the TV. What, do you think he would notice it was you? Oh, it's a good question. Yeah, let's try well, it. Well, it's hard because he's so attentive to the TV in general. I wouldn't really know. Yeah, well, it would be interesting yeah. if I was gone and, and Natalie, my girlfriend, put on a show that I was on. You must keep the TV on when you're out to, her, no. to have some company for him, no? He's kettle trained, so we'll put him away in his kennel. He, ah. he likes it. Okay. He goes, it, it depends. If we're gone for like extended periods of time, we'll put him in his kennel, so it's more to keep him safe. I've been flirting with getting a dog, but I'm nowhere closer to uh, just flirting. Uh, I never had a dog in my life. Billy's had grown up with dogs and had a bunch of dogs, and I love I think my favorite dog ever is Bob. He's a great dog. Yeah, I, Billy's dog. So uh, it's I, not to sound dramatic, but it's kind please, of, it's changed dramatic. my life. I got a tattoo of him right here. Oh yeah. Oh, let's see him. Yeah. Let's have a look, let's at, have a look at that. Uh, it, well, he taught me the value uh, of being unconditionally liked and how that's better than being unconditionally loved. Well, I'll talk about that. Extrapolate. Well, your mom unconditionally loves you. Mm. You know. No, I'm kidding. That's but she true. still thinks you're an asshole sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know? Is. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, yeah, you know, when people say they unconditionally love you, it's almost like they almost have to. Right. There's a sense of like um, responsibility, you know, like your sister, your sibling, and they've learned to appreciate you. But a dog unconditionally likes you. Like Jeff's the only living thing in this world that I've encountered that likes everything about me always likes you and that's a great feeling because i know that i i don't have like i have qualities that people don't like (laughs) you know like even your girlfriend you're being annoying or what you know what i'm saying we we get on people's nerves and or maybe jeff makes me feel like i can't i I never get on his nerves or maybe jeff doesn't maybe the way that jeff shows that he's not really into you right now doesn't resonate in a way that feels like you're unliked. Maybe when Bobby or Jeff is a little bit like, no, I'm kind of done with this human, they jump off your lap and go sit in their kennel and have a little half hour to themselves. And you might just think, that's great. They're just having a little time. I don't know why you want to ruin this for me, Dominic. I'm just putting it out there uh, that that could be also happening. It's possible, yeah. Uh, But it, uh, I'll, yeah. He, He makes me feel that regardless of whether it's true or not. And it's a nice feeling. That's a great thing. I do hear a lot of the times with people who have dogs that say, ah, oh, the great thing about dogs is they're so selfless and they, they love you and they're always happy to see you and they're always happy to do whatever you want to do, which seems to be the case. It's true with the owner or possibly the owner's significant other or family and stuff, but they don't do that with everyone. Do you know what I mean? The dogs? The dogs. They'll do, dogs are actually very single-minded about about what they want to do. Like, if you yeah. say, sit, they probably will do it for their owner. But if it's someone else saying sit, they're like, no, I'm not going to sit for you. He's some, he often does it for me. Also, like, for for me, it's like Jeff and I are very close. Nellie, Nellie and I live together, my girlfriend. Right. And she, she's just an incredibly likable person. So I just, I just, I've accepted and I quite like what I like about her is is you know, again she's very likable so 
I just feel like if it was like a one-off, if people like weren't worried about feelings, everyone just likes her more than they like me, except yeah. for Jeff. That's like you and me, isn't it? Yeah. Which is really nice. Everyone like it's just Billy like he, he he's we have a bond. Natalie he likes Natalie. He loves Natalie. But Jeff and I are very close. And right. and Jeff's the only I think Jeff's the only person who would pick me over Natalie. Ah. Yeah, I think everyone would pick Billy over me. Except for Nick. Yeah, maybe you like me more than uh, yeah. Billy. It's a close race. Well, let's wait until we get I've to thought the about you more because of what you taught Thanks, me. Thanks, Nick. My dog, my dog definitely likes my wife more than me. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. If we're all sat watching a movie, Bobby's favorite position is to sit just to the left of Ali's thigh yeah. Yeah. on a little Loves blanket. It. Which is one of my favorite places to sit. I bet. He'll but, come and say yeah. hello to guests quite a lot. Hello. I, me. You. He'll come check me out. Yes. A little bit of hanging out for like 10, 15 minutes. See if you've got anything going on. Are you going to give me a stroke type thing? But when he really wants to settle down, yeah. he goes and hangs out next to Ali. I love he? dogs. Always loved them. The only sad thing about a dog, and I don't want to bring this up just now because you've got a tattoo and all that. They no. don't last no. as long as humans. No. And that is incredibly painful. So, it's awful. I've already, as soon as I got him, I, I started worrying about that. Because with, I, I, I'm allergic to most dogs. And Jeff's not uh, hyperallergenic. And so, you know, I've always liked dogs, but as someone who's, who has allergies to, it's like most short-haired dogs, it's mm, the dander. I'm, I'm a little bit like that yeah. too. And uh, so, you know, I've learned to keep my distance and not cuddle with ah, dogs. Ah, so he doesn't know. sleep in your bed. No, Jeff does. No, oh, he does. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure. Cause so I, I spent most of my life just having boundaries with dogs because I didn't, you know, I wasn't sure how I would sure. react. And, um, and then I, I played with Jeff's dad before Jeff was born. It was kind of like, can I, will I have a reaction? And I did it. And so, yeah, I had some boundaries. Uh, I was like, oh, Jeff will sleep. It was kind of on a, I'll, we'll have some boundaries, but now Jeff sleeps on my head sometimes. Lovely. Yeah. And what type of doggy is Jeff? He's an Australian cobra dog. He's like a golden doodle. Oh, lovely. Lovely. But uh, a more specific, uh, he's a, they're bred to be uh, therapy dogs, apparently. Oh, like he's a companion. Yeah, yeah companion. Dogs, yeah. Right. I remember Vigo wrote, v I think some of my favorite work that Vigo ever does is, what are you laughing at? <laughs> what are you laughing at? 80% your face. 20%. What did I do with my face? It's just funny. Oh, thanks. And 20%, I hope you're going to tell this story that I think you're going to no, tell. No, I don't think I am because this is actually a sad story. <laughs> I love, you can tell it though. I love Vigo as an actor. He's a brilliant photographer, Vigo. Great painter. But I think my favorite medium that Vigo works in alongside acting is poetry. He's a really brilliant poet, Vigo Mortensen. And he wrote a poem about his dog having died. And he goes to pick up the ashes of his dog. And he talks about, I can't remember specifically, but he's like, you know, we used to run in the field and do this. I used to throw a stick for you and you used to chase after a bone and all this kind of stuff. And now you're a pile of dust mm. in my hand and it was brilliantly realized that poem so yeah i guess we should all just kill ourselves <laughs> he also tells a story about that dog where um he he was somewhere else when it died this dog <laughs> <laughs> he was somewhere else when it died and he had to go and pick up its body from the vet to take it back to where they you know where they were from and it was like a five hour drive taking it back to get it cremated to become ashes get back. so he picked up the dog and it's in like a bag you know, obviously and and he put it on the passenger seat and he had this five hour drive back home to where they were from and he said he was speaking to it this is in one of his books this story i read it and he spoke to this dog all the way home reminiscing about all the lovely times they had and all that, getting ready for him to be cremated. And when he got him home and took him out of the bag, it, it wasn't his dog. <laughs> <laughs> the vet had given him the wrong oh, dog. No. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, and that dog it? had to listen to all those stories oh, that he wasn't involved in. Because Vigo can bang on. I he? tell you what. He can really bang on. That's a sad uh, and funny story. It's, uh, yeah, it's poetic in itself. But it? Is that enough about dogs? Well, I well, could talk about dogs very, all day. Just very Hold finely. on. This is only tiny, but do you remember Elijah had a dog that in, <laughs> in the, in the twilight, do you know what I'm going to say? Yeah. In the twilight of his years, 
the dog got kind of randy. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. What was that? What were you going to say? I was going to say his dog likes to stare at the wall. Mm. It'll sit three inches away from the wall and just look at the wall. Does he have a new dog? For hours. Mm. I don't know if it's the same. I don't know if this is Randy dog. Sounds like a Magna Doodle. No, that, the Randy dog's dead. Tell me about the Randy dog. The Randy dog wasn't Randy like horny for like a lot of his life, but in the final few years of its life, it got horny. That's like you. <laughs> yeah. And it would, it would like, you know, try and shag the cushions or shag their leg or whatever. And they would push it off and go, no, no, don't, don't do that. And as they pushed it off, it still had a, a couple of little like pelvic yeah. jerks going on All that right, it couldn't yeah. stop. So he said that they would like kick it off and go, stop that. And then it would walk off into the corner. And as it was walking off, it would be like, still trying to get the last couple of jerks. Jeff, in, Jeff does that. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, great. <laughs> Even though it will be wet and chilly in most parts of the country, running will still be a huge part of people's lives trying to achieve their personal best. The Wool Dasher Mizzle, a weather repellent performance running shoe, is the first shoe of its kind. It's sustainably made from natural materials with a low environmental impact on the planet. Fantastic shoes, Dom. And as you say, sometimes you don't want to go out and do some running, but when you've got good shoes, it helps you out, I tell you that. And I tell you, Dom, I wear mine when I'm not running. I like to just wear them just about town and looking good. Guys, they look fantastic. They're extremely comfortable. You feel great wearing them because they're good for the environment. I'm not a big runner myself. I know you run a little bit more than me. You say they're fantastic when you're they running. They're great. Comfy, I love right? them, Dom. They're just, a, they're just a brilliant shoe and they look great as well. I, I absolutely love mine. I do. And, uh, and also they look different. So you've got a kind of different looking shoe, which I like. You feel like, yeah, I'm being a bit of a rebel here. And also, all birds built the Wool Dasher Mizzle using natural materials to have a low environmental impact. So you can break a sweat without breaking the planet. This winter, keep your feet cozy and dry with the Allbirds Wool Dasher Mizzles. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. Oh, Tom, that really makes me... Ah, uh, yes, the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Yeah, I love how Shopify has all the tools and the resources for all your businesses to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Yeah, your wife uses it, doesn't she? And she does. loves it. For all of you who don't know, our very own The Friendship Onion website is powered by Shopify. Oh, yeah, we love it. Without it, all you lovely people would have no way of receiving our Friendship Onion merchandise. Like ours, Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. You can reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Shopify gains insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and all that stuff. It's really much more than a store. Shopify grows with you. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash onion, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash onion right now. That's shopify.com slash onion. Well, let's let's talk about The Bachelor because I want to I ask Nick some questions. About I have, yeah, a lot of stories. Were you, what of season questions. of The Bachelor did you feature in? 21. Oh, wow, that's the first one you're in. So you knew... No, of, no, well, that's the, the season I was The Bachelor. Okay. So obviously you knew about the show. You watch, Do you have to be a fan of the show, watch it to get through the whole casting thing? N no, I mean, I was familiar with it when I first went on. But well, my, you, my you were... Already in the Bachelorette, yeah, that's usually right? Yeah, where you you get casted on the the Bachelorette, right? So, so that you, so you first you're one of many before you could ever be the one. So the to one, yeah. yeah okay, see, I've I've never seen the Bachelor or the Bachelorette. I know Jimmy Kimmel's a big fan because he talks about it a lot in his show, and he's told it to me. Honestly, because I've not seen it, it seems a bit obscene. Sure, one hundred percent. One girl or one guy is looking for a a choice of how many people are, are at the start? 30. 30. Yeah. And can she, it, can he or she do anything? If she feels, if he or she feels inclined, can they be like, right, we're closing the door. Good night. Not, 
give this a test uh, the drive. The perception of that, yes, but in reality, you are filming a show, so there's obligations as the as the lead or the bachelor to fulfill. To not do that. Like, is your, is, is your contract that you sign huge? It's long. Yeah. Where it's like, you can't talk about any of this, you yeah. can't do this, you can't do that. You They're can't. restricted. It, it's it's kind of like uh, what they have, It's people always ask, is it scripted? And it's not at all, at all scripted, but it's staged. So, yeah. you know, it's, they give you rooms to play in. So it's kind of like, you know, hey, we have to stay in this room. Yep. You can do whatever you want in this room. <laughs> okay. You know, so there's boundaries of the things you can do. Um, and, Let's take it yeah. right, right back. So you started on the bachelorette, right? right? Yeah. What is the audition process to get on the bachelorette? What age are you at this point? How old? I was, I was, I was older for the right. for what they did. Mm -hmm. I was, in, I was older third. than you are now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Benjamin no, but, Button. Or? Uh, I was thirty-three. Okay, and you—they just held a, an open edition, or you knew a friend. My who... friend's wife signed me up. Okay, without me knowing, and then I got a brilliant. Call, uh, I got a call. I was in San Francisco for work, and I got a call, and they were like, "Hey, this is so and so from ABC, The Bachelor. Are you still interested?" And being on, I'm like, oh, oh, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, you know. And then they, and I think they were typically used to a reaction like that. It's like, oh, maybe, maybe your friend signed you up, but we're gonna. I was living in Chicago at the time, so and they will do casting visits. Their casting department will go to major cities, you know, like Chicago, and and do like a to meet locals. Right. So we'll be there in Chicago. We'd love to meet you. So at, the, at the time, I, my first reaction was, "There's no way I'm going to go on." But at that point in my life, I, I'd never been to LA. I didn't know anything about TV or entertainment. So my, I, I, I was like, "Sure." I thought it would be fun to just kind of go through the process just to see what that was sure. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fully expecting uh, to, 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 you know, to either yeah. not get casted or decline if they if they asked. And then, <clears throat> so you're on that TV show. Yeah. And you did really well on it, right? <laughs> well, that's how you asked. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I was a focal point of the season. Yeah. So then you get asked back to another Bachelorette. Well, then I was involved in that in world. And as, you know, just like actors might date actors. And it's a, it, it's a, it's a traumatic experience that you yeah. go through. And so they have new seasons. And I became friends with a girl who was on the next season. Right. They casted her as the Bachelorette. And we had this bond or connection. And uh -huh. they found out about it. And I I had a crush on her at the time. And, and so they, they gave me the opportunity, if I wanted, to pursue her on the, on the show. And I, I said yes. So now you're living in L.A.? At, by this point? And after that experience, I moved to LA. Okay, yeah. cool. And <clears throat> The Bachelor and The Bachelorette includes this flower giving, so a rose yeah, giving. Rose, so yeah. a, flower giving, yeah. And that means, that means you've been selected for the next yeah, round, it's right? A, yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. It's, um, but each week, there's one less rose. Not, the, well, it depends. It, uh, you know, good, it, any given week, Two, one might go home, two, three. Just depends on, you know, the producers will decide. You know, it depends on what's going on, how much. It really depends on what's going on. In the back of my mind, they're always thinking, you know, per episode, how is this going to fit? How do we want to air this? They, right. they are, they're filming a show. <clears throat> uh, yeah. And obviously, no secret. Obviously, and so, it gets, emotions are involved. I mean, obviously, throughout the course of so many seasons of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, clearly people have fallen in love. Clearly, people have broken up. They've, there's been emotions involved in your time on those specific seasons and also throughout the course of the show has there been like really heightened emotions of like you know something potentially getting physical or some real serious stuff going on i wouldn't nothing physical you're not allowed to do that obviously well you're not allowed you get kicked off uh i in my out time i've it's 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 arguing the 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 conf the fights if, mm. are, are arguments. There's never they've they've flirted with suggesting there might be a physical altercation, but doesn't happen. In my experience, it's never like really. before the ad break. They'd be like, "Oh, come back after the break." Bro. Yeah, but 
I don't, but it just know, turns it's, into it's really like, just petty arguing. It's very high school petty kind of arguing. We've never had an argument. On, on a feeling no, standpoint, much. there's there's real heartbreak and there's real tears. Yeah, times, right. Yeah. Because I mean, the, as you see, I mean, the emotions must get real yeah. and get really high. It's a social experiment. You guys mm. ever heard of the Stanford Prison Experiment? Sure. Yeah, yeah the prisoners it's, in the prison ward. It's that. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're you're put into a very controlled environment. High stress. High stress. Lack of sleep. You know, and not because it's not always deliberate. It's just yeah. Time. Take you know, you guys film movies. Like sometimes you gotta it takes yeah. time and yeah. hurry up and wait. Yeah. yeah. You're kept in the dark a lot, and you have a singular focus. You know, there's no distraction, there's no phones, no communication with your family or friends. So then you become obsessed with whatever it is you're supposed to focus on, and and then they give you validation through, you know, if if the the lead likes you, they will validate you, obviously. Yeah. And uh, and uh, it's an environment based off withholding love. You spend far more time away from the person than with them. And so you get to, you you know, kind of like in high school when we're younger, yeah. we, uh, you know, like we don't get to spend the night with the people we like or you know, we have to ask our he parents did. for permission. You know, it's a lot like that type of love. And yeah. so you you romanticize. It's it's a, a yeah. relationship built on the idea of things, not the reality of things. But clearly the producers are manipulating that whole situation. So if they see a potential, you know, uh, kind of spark point between two girls or two guys or a little love triangle, they're going to lean into that. Were there times where you kind of resented what the producers were doing? I, you know, I think sometimes the producers are a scapegoat um, for cast people go mm-hmm. on to kind of blame their decisions. You know, listen, they are producing a TV show. Mm-hmm. And what, what I describe them as, they're the friend who tells you to buy the boat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Practically speaking, if you go to a friend and says, hey, I'm thinking to buy a boat, what do you think? A, a good friend, a pragmatic friend would be like, well, let's weigh the pros and cons. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's going to be fun, but you know, how much can you really use it? It's a cost, right. a depreciation. And the one friend would be like, you should totally buy the boat because all they're thinking about is having a friend with a boat. They that would can be go so much on fun. And, yeah. and so the producers are that. You know, They want you... They're not there to tell you what you shouldn't do. If you're thinking and feeling something, they're there to maximize how you express yourself in any given moment. They're not there to offer, you know, uh, kind of a alternative point of view or, or you know, it's it, they want you to maximize your emotions. So at the end of the day, you're in charge of your own emotions. They're, they don't make you do anything, you know, so. But as you say, you're in this environment in the same way that, a lot of lead actors and lead actresses fall in love in a movie because, you know, you're there pretending you're in love or and it becomes, as you say, it's just one focus. You're all in this world together. So if you don't mind me asking, and maybe you don't want to talk about this because I know you're in a relationship and all that, but you did fall in love. <laughs> I felt and, real feelings. Uh, uh, and, and, I uh, felt like what felt like real feelings. Because you asked someone to marry you, right? Uh, I only proposed when I was The Bachelor. When you but were I came, The Bachelor. I mean, the first season, I probably would have if she didn't broke up, break up with me beforehand. And the second season, the same, but both of which rejected me right before the actual proposal. <sighs> oh, God. Yeah. That's dramatic. Okay. I'm going to go back and watch that. We're used to re- rejection, though, aren't we, as actors? I th- genuinely yeah. think I am quite good with rejection, and I do think it's because of the job that we do. Yeah. Well, you've had a lot of it. I've had life. a lot of rejections over the years. Sale. I, I came from a sales background, same thing. I just yeah. think, you know, if you do it for a living where someone, you've talked about this before in terms of if you want to be an actor and someone doesn't like what you do, they're specifically saying, I don't like you. Yeah, I am not interested in what you are bringing to the table. Or more related to love, it's not so much I don't like you because in relationships in life, it's more, I just like them better. Oh, yeah. Which is almost worse. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's like, you're good, but they're better. And that's a probably assume, you know. Well, that's, you know, I mean, that's the same in acting. That's what go, I mean. Yeah. You know, and, and you were all right in the audition. You might nail it, but like, this person's mm, better. You know? Yeah sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sometimes your agent's terrible for that kind of thing, huh? Oh, <laughs> when God. they go like that, they absolutely oh, loved yeah. you. They thought you are fantastic. But they loved him just a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. You're like, well, that doesn't You help. feel helpless right there. <laughs> yeah, like that, yeah, right? right. A little yeah. bit. Because you're nothing to work on. Yeah. But it does make you much more resilient in the, you know, just civilian life that you're walking around to try something, to be like, 
you know, would you like to go for dinner? And you think, well, the worst that can happen here is they can say no. And because you get told no so many times in your professional life, you just, they just go, no. And you go, all right, great. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> what about your friend? No. Yeah. Okay, see you later. <laughs> Billy and Dom eat the world. Well, tell us what we've got here, Nick, or have we already talked about it? No, we, we haven't. haven't. And we're definitely running. And where does this originate uh, from? Uh, it's a oh, family recipe from my dad's side of the family. Well, so this that's gone nationwide <laughs> has come specifically from I your family. I, I don't know. I, I'm quite certain my family didn't create it. But do you uh, know if it came from I'm, a certain region of the United States I, I of don't, America? No, no. But Let's I do know as far as, as far as it relates to my knowledge of it, it was my dad's side of the family. It's a snack my dad Hello, liked, Nick's he dad. Learned, he learned from his father. Well, I... Co- uh, yeah, yeah. Well, according to um, according to Johnny Clues here, who you'll see on your right. There, there he Nick, is. There he is right there. Thank you. And uh, John will often get things wrong. Thank you very can I, much, can I, John. Can we bite it? Oh, shit, you see? You see? Oh, no. Oh, look at this. Look at that. <laughs> Johnny Clueless. <laughs> I can't believe oh, it. Oh, no, you're going to smell a pickle. You said that looked fantastic All today as well. All skin trousers, oh, I can't believe that Johnny Clues rubbed his pickle on my trousers. That's a disgrace. No, Nick, no. you've already started it. Good, yes. Yeah, oh, Nick, you've I got want, to wait. I want to make sure he. Nick, you've got to right. hold your horses. Oh, John, oh, John, oh, according to Johnny, Johnny Clues, who just absolutely destroyed oh, my. my trousers He's ruined with his those pickle. trousers. He's ruined them. Um, You'll have to get those dry cleaned. He uh. says, he said it originated during the Great Depression. That makes sense. There'll be another Great Depression because of my trousers, because I love them. Yeah. It's a shame that they call it the Great Depression. Yeah, it should be the awful, well, the awful yeah, the depression. Shitty depression. Americans were cutting corners any way they could. Of course and they were. pickles and peanut butter were cheap and plentiful at the grocery store. The sandwiches, including some for peanut butter and mayonnaise, what? Found themselves at lunch counters in school lunches and depression era cookbooks. However, today, mention the words peanut butter and pickle slices in the same sentence, you'll probably hear a proclamation of disgust. Give us a quick proclamation of disgust. Uh, there you go. Uh, great, great example. Now, is this something you've known since you were a little kid? Yeah. And is this like a, a comfort food for you? Do you eat it when you maybe are hungover? Do you eat it when you're watching a movie? What is this a... As a kid, it was just a regular snack I enjoyed. And as an adult, it'll be something that I'd be like, Usually what will happen is it'll be something, you know, if I get a new girlfriend or 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 a friend or and I and we'll be talking like something version like, of, us, like some friends. version of this. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like you gotta try it. And then I'll remind myself how much I like it and it's a good snack to have. In would Jeff have a, a bite of this or not? Jeff will eat anything that I let him. Oh. Yeah. In the country, the good old uncle US of Stateside, do you think um a lot of people know this, or is this kind of a strange sandwich for people even from Rarely, the States? most people are surprised, but once in a while I'll uh, encounter someone who will also vouch for it. I had, almost had a Billy. You almost, you almost did a Billy Boyd you know. there. I'm going to give mine a, I'm going to give mine a bite. Johnny's already getting He's stuck in. John's I, loving it. I tend to put John's more peanut butter it by on the it. Look of him. I tend to put more peanut butter on it. There should be more peanut butter, apparently. Hold on, it's John's okay. coming with more. Right, hold, I'm going to wait and get it the way that you like it. Nick, because no. we don't want to get it the wrong way. What? I'm liking it. Right, no, hold it's on. It's very good, but slap, stick a bit on there. Would a you, John? Bit more peanut butter. I'm, I'm, yeah, slather a bit of peanut butter all over his sandwich, Come on, all over yeah. his trousers, John. Well, it's too Why late. Not? The pants have gone, John. Like there you go. Look at that. You no. look like a thing. You look like a what do you call Hold those on. guys? Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The like guys have been put the thing on the wall. What you was that oh, yeah. a plaster? Ah, plaster. Peter and Labourer. Right, here we go, Nick. I would have, you'd think the combination of pickles and peanut butter don't go well, but they're both salty, aren't they? So the salt, it kind of well, marries peanut, together. Peanut butter has a bit of sweetness so to like, it. He didn't, initially didn't like it. Primarily doesn't like it. Generally doesn't like it. I don't think doesn't I like, like it. Doesn't like it. I like it. Really? You're, you're one of, yeah. It feels, it, it tastes like something you go, it's all right, remove the pickle. It'll be better. No, I actually quite like it. Wait a minute. I would say a great hangover cure. Because suppose if you're hungover, drinking pickle juice is a good idea. I've heard so that. So eating pickles with peanut butter, which is also good for a hangover, would be good. 
How's bread for hangover? No, I don't think great. Right, so that's two out of three. Initially, we well, like that meatloaf song, right? Two out of three. three, 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 three bad, is it? Is it getting better? No. It's getting it's better getting all the time. Better. Like the Beatles song. No, that's that. Oh, yeah, that's the Beatles. I was, going to, I was doing you too there. Or do you feel the same? Um, that is getting you, better. Initially, you you had suggested uh, banana and mayonnaise sandwiches. Was that not that you? Was definitely not me. Uh, I, that I don't, came, I'm not a fan of it came bananas, from a it neither came, mayonnaise nor the bananas. John's telling us that it came from a ceiling fan. Is that right? Came from a so a ceiling fan. Oh, a, a fan. Sorry, a fan sent us in banana and mayonnaise sandwiches. And we'll I try said, that another time. No, I said that sounds like my nightmare. I were, if I were French, absolutem on non. Would you let someone peel your banana? Uh, I don't. I wouldn't. I don't like bananas. All right. I will put bananas in smoothies because right. I can't taste it because they are healthy Do you freeze for you. it? Do you freeze it first? Mm -hmm. No. Well, I would. Freeze your banana <clears throat> before you have it in a smoothie. Then you no. get a cold smoothie. Oh, yeah. Well, at least put ice in it because I'd rather have a fresh Well, I don't fruit. like no, to dilute no. my smoothies. I it was, a, it was a, a bodybuilder, a woman bodybuilder who told me, and she says that is a secret. Was it Fatima Whitbread? No. Okay. Do you have any strange things with food? Like I have don't touch my eggs, don't touch my beans, don't touch my bread. You have don't touch my fruit. I'll tell you something a little strange about, about you because you cook for me quite a bit. Mm. You tend to be quite sparing with seasoning. No. You are? I am not. <laughs> You so ask my wife, she goes crazy oh, about really? this stuff. Because when I'm at your house, you'll bring a wonderful mashed potato, some vegetables, a piece of fish, and I'll always say, have you got any salt and pepper? And then you'll run off and go, oh, yeah, salt and pepper. It's like you bring it without anything. Oh, my wife would, would disagree with you there, Tom. Sorry, And Alison. you know what my wife really hates? Whenever I salt anything, I throw the salt over my left shoulder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the devil. For the devil, because he's at your shoulder, Nick. He's at your shoulder at all times, and he doesn't like salt in his eye. There's one thing the devil doesn't like, salt in his eye. Well, so supposedly. Always over your left shoulder. But my wife hates that because obviously it lands on the floor. Well, no, supposedly the, the major, um, like, formative structure of a devil is similar to a slug. <laughs> it's true. And as we know, slugs respond to salt very badly. You'll kill a slug if yeah. you put salt on a slug. See if a slug's have it sucking your blood. No, a that's a salt. leech. Oh, a leech. If there's a leech on you, Nick, a little bit of salt. There's, a, diff there's a difference between a slug and a leech. Oh, it's a massive difference. A completely different animal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but a slug will eat all of your garden vegetables or your fruits and stuff. So my dad, every so often, will leave little sources of beer around the garden. And slugs love beer, but they're complete alcoholics. So they'll drink so much beer that it will kill them. So you'll see a whole bunch of um, dead slugs the next day, which is not the worst way to die. They basically got drunk. Yeah. And then died? And then died from drinking too much, like Richard Burton. <laughs> <laughs> did he die in your dad's garden? Yeah, he did. Eating my dad's vegetables. This is good. I'm, like starting, I'm starting to like it but more. Wait, tell it, us, take, it, uh, it takes a little getting used to it. Tell us about something strange about the way that you eat. I'm trying to think, Don, but I can't think of anything that I am... Um, I don't like. I don't mind people bringing me a fruit bowl. In fact, I'd I'd probably thank them if someone they brought me a a nice uh, bowl of fruit. If there, somebody made I would me have to toast. try not to be rude. Yeah, You'd say oh, I'll, my, I'll eat that later or something. My because my my natural reaction would be like oh God, oh, oh my wow. God how dare you bring me a cherry? I would I would my innards would be offended. And, yeah, uh, and then if to, somebody touched your bread, if somebody said to you, "Look, I've made your perfect sandwich." Marmite, English cheese, rocket. All I can think. I'm not finished yet. Oh, go on, go on. Salt and vinegar, Chris. Yeah. There's one thing, Miss. English so butter. A bunch of... English butter. Yeah. Um, that was it. No. Are you sure? Yeah. What else? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've done the Chris, rocket, cheese, butter. Uh -huh. oh, you That's done... it. No, slice of green apple. Slice of green apple. Slice of green apple. You no, would say to them, no. Thank you. No, I'd probably say, fa I wouldn't say no, thank the you. The cheese and the apple, I can't. Oh, cheese and apple's fantastic. I, <laughs> mature English cheddar and a bite of an apple and a mature English cheddar, that is a great flavor combination, isn't it? What? 
I just said he, it. He's your English cheddar. He, he's too and a involved. Bite of apple. He's too involved. I was just getting my pickle in my mouth there. I just beg your pardon. You were the first person to tell me in New Zealand of a strange flavor combination which goes really well uh, together strawberries and balsamic vinegar. You told Delicious. me. Delicious. You just dip the strawberries it, yeah. in balsamic vinegar. I can see that. Um, uh, no, if I think it must me, enhance the flavor of the strawberry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Brings out the, the sweetness of it. If, if someone brought me a sandwich, I would of course say thank you, but I would be constantly, I would be fixated on how much they've touched the bread in moving it around and fashioning all the things on top of it. I'm all right with my mum or my dad making a sandwich or my brother. You're right, because people get handsy with bread yeah, if they handsy. make you a sandwich. Mm. It's like they almost forget that. That could be a new thing for you, Nick, yeah. that you won't be able to have a sandwich now. Is there not something that everyone else likes and you're just like, no, nah, I'm not into it? I don't like cinnamon. Yeah, you don't like cinnamon, do you? You know? No. no. I don't I used to I used to really hate cinnamon. I as a kid I you would snack what you would make is toast, butter, and cinnamon. Mm. Well, that's where it started, Nick. Yeah. Uh, Probably the Great at Depression. Nick's house. No. Somebody else's house. We were on our way to a fun fair, like, you know, Six Flags or something. And they made that in in America. And they made me toast and butter and cinnamon and I ate it. And then I went on a big dipper and I was sick to my stomach then. Mm. So I, well, that, I think I always, I always thought of that. It's Pavlovian. It's Pavlovian. Yeah. Yeah. It's an it's a unfortunate coincidence yeah. that you went yeah. on that ride. Yeah. But I'm starting, to get, I'm starting to get back on to cinnamon, but I still, I wouldn't thank you for it. John's saying, would Marmite work on pickles and peanut butter on not, sandwich? Not with peanut butter, I wouldn't think. I don't it. think that combination but pickle would and, and, and cheese. Marmite's very savoury, and you need something a bit more in the savoury world. Oh, is that burp there? We should give it some scores. Nick, we score these things in three separate categories. Okay. Taste, aesthetics, looks, the look of it, usefulness. You can choose it's whatever actually, that mean, word means. I think it would score actually, high in two of the three. Okay. Uh, it's actually the same scoring they use on the bachelor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So looks. It's out of 10. Oh. No, taste. Taste, I mean. Yeah, taste. Taste. Go on, are you you're asking our, me? Well, you're our guest. Reality. Well, I, I mean, listen, I, it's, uh, it's, you can it's use a, a ten point. for me. It's a <gasps> 10 out of 10. There's not that many things that have had a perfect 10. There's only there. two things that have had a perfect 10, and only from Dom. Mm. Marmite well, I mean, Guinness. I, I'm, I'm, I'm biased. This is like my you brought it. childhood favorite snack. Wow. Mine's Moams, and we'll have Moams on <laughs> on another episode. Moams? Now, Moams. I mean, you did a fantastic job, and I thank you. Johnny Clues. Johnny for making this. You know, we're, we're in a studio and he had to use a, 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 a an oven. But yeah, it's not very energy Fresh efficient. off the toaster. I also like it on an English muffin. Oh, gosh. Mm. As the toast base. Have you had a crumpet? Peanut. I haven't. I haven't. Or a pikelet. I have not. Have you had a pikelet? No, I enjoyed a tart But once. if you have a really hot piece of toast and a lot of gooey melted <laughs> peanut butter and a pickle. Well, you should try a crumpet. That's when it's a real 10. A crumpet is basically a pikelet with a big fat ass, and a pikelet is like a. We like talking a, about food still? Yeah, yeah, it's like a it's like a condensed pancake, isn't it? A pikelet? I don't know what a pikelet. You know is. what a crumpet is, right? I know what a crumpet. So is. imagine a crumpet with the top three inches cut off, so you basically just got the base. That's a pikelet. Oh, I've never had a pikelet. Sounds pikelet's, light. Pikelets are good. They might be just a northern thing, but a crumpet. With peanut butter and a, and a oh, pickle. That'd be good. Lovely. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I enjoy it. A crumpet because it all melts in. Oh, I love yeah. that. I'm getting more and more used to this. Well, and let's, I'm, let's I'm down to my last, my last bite, and it's the perfect bite. <laughs> Nick's it giving is. it 10. How much are you going to give it out of I'm, 10? I'm, William I'm, Boyd. I'm only giving it 6.4. That's fine. I mean, hey, you started at a 2. Exactly. Oh. I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it a 7.3 out of 10. Well done, Tom. Aesthetics. How does it look? How does it oh. look to you, Nick? Well, again, I've it's not the bell of I'm the ball. I'm familiar. Yeah, it's it's not the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I think no. that's what makes it so flavorful is because it 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 presents as potentially harmful to you. It's a sneaky, mm -hmm. sneaky, delicious snack. Yeah, I mean, so, pickles, you know, it's pickles a are pretty three or a four no, in yeah. terms of looks. A three or a four. So do you want to give it a three point five? Then? Yeah, I'll give it a three point five. Mm. I think it's not ugly, Dom. I'm going to give it a 6.9. Oh, 
I'll give it a 6.5. Well, like lovely. Said, lovely. It's not terrible, but it's, it's, it's bread and peanut butter and pickles. I mean, it's not. It's not now, changing the world, is it? Usefulness. Useful. Now, sometimes we have things on here that are very useful. You can put it in a pie. You can make ice cream from it. You can, you know what I mean? You can travel with it. You can bring it well, to a party. I mean, we, we learned that this was invented during the Great Depression when... When people didn't have people much. People literally needed. What We have to... Exactly. We have to find something. Hold on. Ugh. Something fell. People really take to the acidic, vinegary taste of the pickles combined with the rich and subtle combined. sweet and salty taste of the peanut butter. They also like the crunch of the pickles with the smooth, creamy, yeah. the creamy crunch peanut of the pickle butter. is a very See? satisfying moment. So does that make it any more useful? Well, define useful. Because you say well, useful you, to well, me, I, I think s- practical. Yeah, like, it's general. You, you know, you could, this is a good, this is a, you can eat this for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Good it's a point. snack. To be fair, you can eat I've most things for breakfast, lunch, I've also noticed, as someone dinner. who's eaten this my whole life, that most grocery stores will have their peanut butter and pickles next to each other. Well, like as if they're trying to send as if, you a message. As if this has been a thing for some time. Since Not everyone, but I noticed, that, since I noticed this at, at, at an early age. And now when I go to a new grocery store, I will see if they, many grocery stores will put their peanut butter and their pickle selection, not only in the same aisle, but quite literally next, right, to, next each to each other. other. Na- so it's easy to shop for. To, and be, to it, be fair. You can pack it for a plane. Yeah, I was going to say. You don't need to like warm it up for it to be good. I mean, yeah, like if you made a sandwich, it's not going to be your best version of it. I was going to say, if you have kids playing, you know, a sports game or whatever, and you're showing up late to pick them up and take them home or watch the second half, if you brought peanut butter and pickle sandwiches, yeah. they're not going to spoil. They're pretty portable. And they're good for after a sports game. And as Nick says, if you are maybe get a new friend and you're chatting to them, you're chatting about food, do you know any weird food? Yeah. Wait till I tell you about my childhood. It's a, it's a great, it's an easy bet to win. Mm-hmm. It's a curiosity. Because Here's, most people aren't familiar with it, will bet that they don't like it. Mm. And they normally do. I yeah. like that. And like, and it's a great way to like, yeah. And then, and then you know, it you breaks bet, the they, ice. I won't like, uh, yeah, it breaks a good conversation it's nice starter. Yeah. And it's a great way to tell people, I told you so. Yeah. I do think most things can be eaten for breakfast, lunch. It's very dinner, satisfying you know I mean? when your girlfriend told you she would never like it and it becomes her favorite snack. Oh. So it's useful in that. See, I was thinking. Yeah, manipulation. <laughs> we, we did a thing on this show once in Billy and Dom Eat the World. We did Jardinera. Do you know what that is? I heard of it, but what is it? Do you it's really... like pickled um, uh, vegetables. Vegetables. Did you forget and the word jal- oh, yeah, yeah. No, jalapenos. It's like a, it's like a topping. Yeah. Of some, like, that that yeah. thing. Yeah. Now, that, if we had to do that again and we did useful, I would give that 10. It's because brilliant. I use it in everything now. It's great in pasta. It's great in pizza. It's great in anything for breakfast. So you, judge, you judge usefulness by versatility. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I, just, I see what you're saying, and I like it breaks the ice. I like that it, it's a it's a conversation piece. I think that makes it useful. So I'm going to go with 8.5. I just bought our friend Nigel a big jar of jardinera. You're very kind for his sometimes. birthday. Yeah, I am a kind man. Because he never had it, and I was like, "I'm sending it to you. You'll love it." And he does love it. I have it sometimes for breakfast. I just take a spoonful, right out, yeah. drain out the oil, straight in my mouth, and then straight to the toilet. And he has a right good shit. Yeah, I do. I have a lot of shit. Um, so usefulness. I think the thing. I think I do think it's quite versatile. Like you said, Nate, it's a good good choice of words. I'm gonna give it. What did you give it? Eight point five. Yeah, I'll give it an 8.5. Wow. That's not bad. What do you think, think, Nick? I'm going to go with 9.5. Jeezy wheezy. That's a high score. You can't use it in every food, but it has a variety of benefits. Situational benefits. And it's not unhealthy for you, especially if you pick the right peanut butter. it's not unhealthy. I don't know how healthy, but it's not unhealthy. There are worse... And it's it's a savory snack, you know, yeah. like a dessert. Yeah. You, you, if you pick if the you're good to, peanut butter, if you're trying butter. to stay away from like sweets and candy, but you still liked a good dessert or something, yeah, that's almost one. Yeah, it's like you would still get that kind of satisfaction of like, mm. 
I think you have to be mindful of what peanut butter you use because some peanut All butter right. is absolutely awful for you. Is it? Yeah, it's full of hydrogenated fat. And I thought they were all just like nah. 100% no, peanut butter. No, 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 no. Nick, you've brought us a fantastic song for us to uh, rate if it's funky or not. This is a song that I grew up with. Oh, wait a minute, Dom. I was going to say something about last week because remember Mm -hmm. we had... Ramstein. Ramstein was on last... And I thought... I I thought it was the the band that won the Eurovision Song Contest. You thought it was Box Fizz. No, but I found out... One of our listeners wrote to us and told us who was the band that won the Eurovision Song Contest and it was a Finnish band... And they were called... You'll never get it. You won't know. So that great story, Bills. I was hoping Johnny was going to come great, in. There. Great story there. One of, our, one, of our, one of our listeners told us who the band was that I thought it was last week. <laughs> Ramstein. I don't know. No, he doesn't know. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Both as bad as each other. Do. <laughs> Do I, don't, I, I don't know how you managed to get through this with us two. Do host me. We did Ramstein last week. Do you know Ramstein? Pretty sure they're a German band. Yeah. And but I was... I, anyway, it's, we're getting too deep into the, into the rabbit hole here. Well, you told a story that had no ending. Well, I had a half an ending. All right. So we do. We ask our guests each week to pick a song that they think is funky. You must have grown up with this song the same way that I did. Yeah, yeah. I think I was eight or nine when it came out and it was my favorite song on the planet yeah for that summer it it reminds me of my father Uh uh-huh and my father would often he had like a saturday morning tradition of peanut butter and pickles blasting Mm. his favorite tunes and i would like wake up to this and and so it's kind of nostalgic for me and then and then when i learned about the origin of the songs i thought it was even cooler and also a band that has had some incredible songs over the years, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but should we listen to the song first? Let's listen. Here we go. Lordy. All right, cut. Look at them yo-yos. That's the way you do it. Hey, what's he doing with his guitar there? He's got some sort of flange on it. <laughs> He's got a flange on isn't he? The reason why I say flange specifically there is, you know, that word flange is attributed to John Lennon. Is it? George Martin had explained a little effect that they'd put on the guitar and George Martin said, ah, it's kind of a little bit of this and a little bit of that with the little flange. And John, John Lennon said, what? Flange? And he went, yeah, flange. It's, some, it's this kind of thing that we call it. So from then on over the years in recording, John would say, put a bit of flange on that guitar, and flange became ah. the word for the thing, but it was kind of just a nickname for it, John Lennon. But what are they doing with the guitar? There's a lot going on with the guitar there. The thing with uh, Knopfler was he, he never used a pick, did he? He was all just fingers. Right. He was all fingers. He, he was thumbs. really, he was all fingers and thumbs. Yeah. He, was, he was a very good kind of picker. So it sounds like he's doing a big kind of... Wow. Dire Straits, amazing band. It's the first album I ever name? bought in my life. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. No. But I do remember the name. Of what? Of the band who won the Eurovision Song Contest. Box Fizz. Lordy. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. One of our listeners wrote in and says, the band who won the Eurovision Song Contest that I was trying to find the name of last week were called Lordy. Lordy Miss Claudie. There you go. First, first album I ever bought in my life, Brothers in Arms. By Dire Straits, which includes this song and also Walk of Life and the song Brothers in Arms, which is incredible. They're, great. they're a great band. Yeah, they're amazing. Romeo and Juliet, remember that song? They do a kind of a modern New York version of Romeo yeah. and Juliet. Sultan's a swing. It's pretty funky. You, here's the thing I don't like about Dire Straits, though. They always make me think of like a pub band because pub bands always play a lot of Dire Straits. So right. then I think Dire Straits are a kind of pub band. Yeah, they're not really, are no, they? No, they're not. Because they're quite, quite sophisticated. What was the first straight? record you bought, Nick? Bought or owned? Like, is it, like bought? Bought. Actually, <sighs> took the money. Took the money. Took Maybe your pocket Are you too young to have got the money and went down and bought a record? Well, there are for CDs. CDs, then. Oh, I was buying records. We're a lot older than you, Nick. Yeah. It's a shame. Well, I, I, my first, I had a cassette. was gifted to me before mm-hmm. I was could afford it. Yeah. And this is an embarrassing answer. No, I love so. it. <clears throat> it was the... Soundtrack to Biodome. 
Bayou well, Don't know with Polly Shore and it's it's a movie. So yeah, it's a bad movie. A mm. Polly Shore soundtrack. That's brilliant. Mm. I, it's an embarrassing. <laughs> Who did answer. the soundtrack? Do you know? No, well, it's a it, you know a variety of songs. Oh, just a variety yeah, of songs. Yeah, you know, I've never been that musically intelligent, and so I would buy like I would watch a movie and and like it like this music that. If I liked the movie, I, you know, I saw this movie when I was like a teenager. I was a big Pauly Shore fan back in his heyday. Pauly Shore and um, who, who's the Baldwin? Stephen Baldwin. Stephen, one of the was, was Sean Astin in it? He was in a lot of no, those he's movies, in wasn't he? He was in Encino Man. Well, first of all, yeah. Which, Which was we, called we, California Man in the UK. Yeah, because no nobody knew what Encino, Encino was. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know it in the like. Mm-hmm. I was a kid from Wisconsin, so yeah. it, it might as well. Dom, it could have been any. Yeah. Here's my hand. Yeah, yeah. Where, if my hand was the United States of America, do the, do the right. Do you do, think that's the, better? Yeah, yeah. Because then you've got the no, pen no, handle. Wait no, a minute. There. Yeah. No, I can't do it. I don't know how I did it. You did it last time. How did they get America? Oh, there. Yeah. There you go. So there's Florida. Yeah. California. Ish, yeah. New York. Yeah. Canada. Mexico. Where? Is Wisconsin? Don't give them any clues, Nick. Wisconsin. I'm gonna guess. Oh God! This, this point to the point. Point to the point. Me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna point guess. There. No. But where, where, where would it go? It's a little up to the right. Oh, up into the right. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah it's the cheese state. Is that right? Yeah. Cheese heads. That's Do you quite... eat a lot of cheese there, or you make cheese there? Is that what it is? They're right there. Yeah, so you make cheese in the, the east is more condensed than the west. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of states up there. Yeah, there's well, not well, many states here, and there's no, hardly any over there. Out. But why are you called the cheese state? Well, it used to be. Now California is, and has been for thirty years. But they, they used to, they still do. But used to produce the most amount of dairy. Dairy farms. It's known for dairy farms. Uh, okay. But California has been producing more dairy for the past 30, 40 years. Let's rate Dire Straits money for nothing out of a level of funk. So we do it out of a level of Brahms, which is no funk, to Prince, which is high level of funk, for, and anything in between. But funk doesn't have to... We're not talking that has to be funk, funk. Like traditional funk. As you would funk, think, traditional like, uh, funk. It's just, is it funky to me? Yeah, Does it make it me feel like, yeah, that was funky. Um, See, because of the... the you the, don't like those strips. Well, no, I don't, can't say. See all the ones you mentioned? Romeo and Juliet, Songs, Songs of Swing. Swing. I love Brothers all that. Arms. But I would never, I wouldn't put an album on. And, and it's, because, it's because of the pub thing. Oh, yeah. You know? And and so because of that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go towards the classical. I'm going to, but people like to play it. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say middle of the road U2. Okay. Okay. Not that funky, but it's... Yeah, so not U2 when they're, yeah! yeah or U2 when they're Europa like, whoa! Right, right. But just like, you know, unforgettable fire. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say Jermaine Jackson funk. Oh, Jermaine I find them Jackson. quite funky. Quite funky. Like These so. sing, we don't have to take our clothes off. Or is that? Is that oh, was that not Janet? No, that wasn't. It was a guy. Unless, it? unless Janet would suddenly turn masculine. Do you remember we that song? We don't have to take our clothes off to have a good time. Oh, no. We, we just, just dance and party all night. And what did he drink? And drink some cherry wine. Oh, ah. Mm-hmm. Remember that song? Oh, you, I do, cherry yeah. wine. What if somebody brought you disgusting. cherry wine, though? Would you be like, mm, don't bring me the cherries? I don't even know what cherries. cherry wine is. Nick, it's been great Nick. to have you. Brilliant. I've I've only had a couple of conversations with you over since we've got to know you, but I like I like how you look at the world. You've got a good sort of Thanks. I like things like the you notice that the peanut butter and the pickle are next to each other yeah. in the store. Yeah. I like that kind of mindscape and I like that you like your new dog. I like I was just about to say, I like your ongoing, evolving, beautiful, close relationship with your doggy wog. And if you want to do an animal communication class, I'll let you know. Let me know. Do I still smell good? I oh, don't know. Yeah. I haven't smelled you. Hold Give on. Give him a sniff. Go on. Headphones. Hang on. Wait. We're waiting. Bated breath. Bated breath. Did he smell a pickle? I can confirm you still smell good. Oh, and do you know what? When I was on my way here today, I noticed my cologne and I thought, I might spray a little bit on because Nick's coming in today. Yeah, give it a spray. But I forgot. 
Okay. Because usually you smell a dog dirt. I don't smell too good, mm. natural. You usually smell a dog dirt. You smell great, though. I, I think you have, a, you have a neutral smell. Yeah. I don't smell of anything. I'm like the guy in perfume. Nick, it's been great having you. And we'll see you around. We both share the same yeah, podcast wanna, studio, yeah. so we'll see you around. Great to see you, mate. Amazing. Thanks for coming on. Guys, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that at uh, the Friendship Onion at castmedia.com. That's cast with a K. And before we go, we should let you know that the holiday merch is still available. And the best thing that we've sold so far that I like is the red holiday Christmas hoodie. It's cozy. It looks great. It's almost kind of Manchester United red. Fantastic hoodie. Too. We'll get you one, Nick. It's yeah, we'll get free. You one more. It's yeah. free. We're going to give you one for free. But you can only get it for like another day. So if you want to get any of the holiday merch, get it now. FriendshipOnYourPodcast.com FriendshipOnYourPodcast.com And if you want to leave us a message, please do tell us what you want to see or hear on the show or any info. And you can leave that at the speakpipe.com forward slash The Friendship Onion. See you next week. Bye-bye. Toodles. With me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright. I'm your oyster, baby. You're my pearl.